no matter what happens in your life, you have the power to make things happen. You have the power to take yourself from a very low state and transform yourself into becoming well again, into transforming yourself. It's not easy. It's yeah. a lot of hard work. Nobody's yeah. saying anything else. Yeah. But if you put the time and the effort, you can achieve anything you want. Welcome to the another episode of the Kelly Show. Today, I'm so thrilled to have someone on my show. Today, no matter what stage you are in your life or in your business, you want to embrace the best version of yourself and unleash your full potential. So today, I have Yasmin Diada on my show. Yasmin Diada is a mindset and personal empowerment coach with a passion for helping people achieve their goals and live their best lives. She discovered her love for coaching while overcoming her own personal challenges and learning to embrace a growth mindset. Then she became fascinated with the power of the mind and its ability to shape our reality. And she decided to turn her passion into a career. Since becoming a coach, she has helped countless individuals break through limiting beliefs. Her work is a combination of handwriting analysis and mindset personal empowerment coaching, working on perception and the subconscious mind. She specializes in finding what is holding people back. Her methods are supportive and empowering, and she created tools to help people develop a more positive outlook on life. She has a degree in English linguistics, and she has studied handwriting analysis and has completed numerous personal development courses, including advanced certificate in life coaching, REBT, mindset life coaching, focus mastery plus breakthrough life coaching, neuroscience for personal development, NLP and CBT. She's excited to bring her skills and experience to you and help you unleash your full potential. Yasmin, I remember I know you from a business meeting and we're both learning from the same mentor. When I first heard your story, I was so inspired by how you overcome your own challenges and difficulties. So Yasmin, could you take us back a little bit? How did you even get into the whole handwriting analysis and performance space? Thank you so much, Kelly, for having me. It's an absolute honor to be on your show. Um, I first started handwriting analysis back in 1992. Mm. And I was fascinated by how different people would have different handwriting. It really got me interested in seeing why that happens. Why don't we all write exactly the same way? Yeah, why yeah. is it if I am upset, my handwriting changes? Why mm. is it when I'm in a hurry, my handwriting changes? So I became mm. fascinated mm -hmm. and I started to study it. Mm. I uh, took uh, my... That led me actually to the love of English language. So mm -hmm. I took a degree in English linguistics. Mm -hmm. um, but then after that, when I was when I got married and I got pregnant with my daughter in, uh, back in 2004, mm -hmm. um, we were in a car accident on the motorway. A car came and crashed into ours. Yeah. And that led me to hit my head against the windshield. So I suffered a lesion to the brain. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, that made me very forgetful. I couldn't remember how to read. I couldn't remember how to write properly. I couldn't remember names of like normal vegetables and fruits. Mm -hmm. It was quite devastating for me. It yeah. took me a while to come back. But when I did and I was able to read again and I got myself back, I was fascinated. How does the mind work? How does that happen? How does somebody who is extremely skilled mm -hmm. end up in that situation and then rebuild themselves how does the mind work so that led me into life coaching mm. and all of the other certifications that i've acquired along along the way and i thought 
if this is all in the mind, and I've seen how handwriting changes with our emotion, how can handwriting help us in our day-to-day life? Mm -hmm. Can it see something within ourselves? Mm -hmm. Is there a way to transform handwriting analysis and develop it a little bit more so we can access different parts of ourselves? Mm -hmm. And within time, I figured out a way to do it. I spent seven years of research Mm -hmm. on um, hundreds of people, seeing how they develop from different stages of emotion Mm -hmm. um, and having them put through different experiments and stuff. Yes, It proved to me that handwriting is an outlet to our thinking. Mm -hmm. And handwriting is like a system linked to our nervous system. Mm -hmm. which is in turn linked to our perception and our subconscious. So how our feelings are comes out onto the paper when we write. Yes. So then I developed different forms of trying to figure out a quick way into Mm -hmm. analyzing not just the perspective, but what's holding people back. Yes. So I use simple geometric drawings and just a few words, and I I can see all of it. Mm -hmm. I thought instead of having pages and pages sent to me by a client, this Mm -hmm. simple technique, which doesn't take minutes, can figure out what is going on within a person's life. Mm -hmm. And that brings me back to you. (laughs) Wow, that that sounds very fascinating, really. It's very fascinating. Thank you, thank you. Really, the handwriting is a very important. As uh, I have a program, it's about Chinese characters to teach people the Chinese handwriting. And I remember when I was little, every time my primary teacher, they, they will emphasize the importance of handwriting. So basically, they were telling us, if you have a really, really good handwriting, you can write very beautiful uh, Chinese characters or English, you will definitely leave a very good impression on others, especially when it comes to finding a job or something, right? If your handwriting is beautiful, they will think you have a very good personality and uh, you do things uh, very well, something like this. I think it's uh, kind of related to what you do, right? Absolutely, absolutely, 100% it does. Because when we take effort in developing our handwriting to make it look beautiful because as i said it's linked to our nervous system Mm -hmm. that means that we are programming ourselves for excellence you and you when you write your chinese characters in that specific way you Mm -hmm. are reprogramming yourself to always achieve excellence to always present yourself in a positive manner you Mm -hmm. don't let the negativity come through within your work and that is extremely important because Anybody who wants to read your handwriting, if they can read it properly, they're not going to get miscommunication. They're not going to get confused. They'll see that beautiful handwriting and think, wow, this person is really amazing. And to the point where they take such pride in the way they write. So I agree with 100%. It's very, very important. Yes, yes, definitely. And can you explain to us, you told me that you had a car accident before and it's definitely catastrophic for everyone, right? So what do you think is the number one driver, one number one motivation that has gotten you where you are right now? Well, the number one drive that got me to where I am is besides my daughter, who is my pride and joy, Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to show her that no matter what happens, you can always pick yourself back up. Mm -hmm. Definitely. I wanted to show people that no matter what happens in your life, you have the power to make things happen. You have the power to take yourself from a very low state and transform yourself into becoming well again into transforming yourself it's not easy it's a lot of hard work nobody's saying anything else yeah but if you put the time and the effort you can achieve anything you want Mm, yeah and it starts by handwriting it starts by your internal self it starts with how you feel about yourself 
can you conquer your own demons? Can you conquer the negativity? And that's why, where REBT comes into mm. because REBT is rational emotive behavioral therapy. It takes all of the irrational beliefs that we grew up with since we were children, all of the disempowering beliefs and transform them into positive beliefs. Yes. Can you give us some advice? How can people overcome these limiting beliefs, those negative beliefs they have in their minds? Because some of us, they might have childhood trauma. Maybe something happened in their childhood. They just don't believe they are good enough. They don't believe they can uh, do best in their life. What kind of suggestion you can give for people to overcome those limiting beliefs? Thank you very much for that question. That's a very, very good question, actually. Um, <laughs> Thank you. <sighs> the way that the, well, be welcome. <laughs> the way the mind works is, especially when we were little, yes. anything we are subjected to, because we don't have any reference point, we mm -hmm. take it as a guarantee. Yes, so let's say that somebody's walking and then they trip on something. Mm -hmm. So a parent thinking, oh, this is just a child that was so cute. They'll tell them, oh, you've got crossed feet, you know, just as a joke. Yes, yes. The child remembers that, crossed feet. Then they go to school and they trip on something else. And then one of the teachers laughs and says, oh, look at you, you're so cute. you've got crossed feet. Mm. So the child will mm. think, oh, I've had that twice. And over time, they will keep thinking about it, saying, oh, I've got crossed feet. When they grow up, they have that in their mind as a limiting belief or disempowering belief that they can't really run or they can't achieve anything because they've got crossed feet. Mm. Even though if they look down, their feet are not crossed. But it That's will right. limit them yes. from creating something. The way to overcome it is to go back to analyze what it is that led them to have that belief. Okay. To find and out the, 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 reason. the source of it. And then analyze it and see, was there any real truth to it? Mm. Once they find that actually, no, it was something completely different. And mm. as a child, not knowing any better, I misunderstood it. The brain will automatically correct itself. Mm -hmm. But oh. you have to go back to that. You have to find that place. That's why it's necessary to have a, a coach, a counselor, a therapist, or, you know, mm -hmm. to take you safely back into that place, mm -hmm. to guide you back mm -hmm. and then bring you forward again. Yes, that's right. Some Absolutely. people have negative emotions linked to other issues that happened to them when they were children. So mm -hmm. for them to travel back without aid could lead them to having a more stressful time. The majority of things that I've come across when it comes to mindset are miscommunicated ideas that mm -hmm. have formulated in our minds. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it could even be that the brain would glitch for like a split second, releasing a hormone. And that hormone with the body will take that as, oh, this is a negative. For example, if somebody is having an ice cream, uh, I'm sorry to anybody who likes mint chocolate chip ice cream but just bear okay. with <laughs> so if they're having a mint chocolate chip ice cream and they've got those little chocolate chips all over the ice cream yes. and then a fly comes by mm -hmm. but the fly passes by but yeah. in their head they saw the the small fly and then they look at their chocolate chip and they're like oh that reminds me of i don't want to eat it mm, yes yes so that's like a negative effect that happens but the brain if it had that emotion it released that hormone from that jump scare, for example, the mind will associate negative response to mint chocolate chip ice cream. So when they grow up, they'll be like, we don't like mint chocolate chip ice cream, even though it could be their favorite flavor mm -hmm. because of that incident. So mm -hmm. once they try it again, once they see, no, actually, it's not that. I remember it was because of a fly. I remember it was this. It's not a big deal. It just corrects itself. And then they'll go back to loving mint chocolate chip ice cream. I mean, these are like really, really simplified examples mm -hmm. um, that I'm giving. But yeah. it does take a bit of work. It does take time to go back. It does take time to 
go through all of the emotions and get ourselves back to where we need to get to. Mm -hmm. Another thing that happens is social media. Yes. We are bombarded all the time with information. Exactly. A lot of the information. Yes. 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 Information overload. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, not all of the information is correct. Because mm -hmm. we're living in a society, that I, I call them a society of copiers. That's Somebody nice. comes up and does a post on Instagram, for example, mm -hmm. and they start to get views. Other people who also want to be popular, they'll copy what they're doing. Yes. But the original has a message to it. Mm -hmm. The rest of them are just copying and the mm -hmm. message gets lost within the translation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So whoever comes across the copied versions could either misunderstand the information or could have a different effect to it. Mm -hmm. That's right. We need to go back to our original selves, not just for ourselves, but for the future generations. We need to teach them what, how important being original is. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we're setting ourselves up and we're setting the future generations up for miscommunication and blocks. Mm -hmm. We'll be create, giving ourselves permission to have issues, to have blocks. That's right. That's right. That's why mentor is very important. That's why having a coach to help us is very, very important. I remember uh, our mentor said we cannot solve a problem once it's created by ourselves. So it's very important to get coaching. And um, I remember when I was little, when I was in the elementary school, and my teacher, she always said to me, you know what, you are really the worst. Why don't you let your parents transfer you to another school? And I believed in that for um, the next 10 years, I believed in that until I met my high school English teacher and he found out I lack confidence. So he gave me so many chances to come out to the front of the classroom to uh, be his assistant, to do role play in the, in the class. And just after one year, I started to pick up my confidence. And he also told me, you are a diamond in the rough. One day you're going to wow. be Yes, yes, I'm very, very grateful for that teacher who truly transformed my life. That's why I began my career to decide to help other people to transform their life as well. So that's my story. I do believe coaching is very, very important. So for many of our audience and listeners, so this niche, the handwriting analysis is still very new to them. Could you explain to them how does your system work? Yes, of course. Yes. So my system comprises of a very simple geometric drawing, like a circle, and you put a mm -hmm. dot in the middle and then you cross it. Uh -huh. The reason why I've chosen this is because a lot of people now with IT coming mm -hmm. in, Mm -hmm. artificial intelligence a lot yes. of people are typing all the time so their handwriting might not be as clear as it used to be before mm -hmm. yes or they might be nervous they're not comfortable writing because they're going to have like uh, limiting beliefs as oh well what if it's not nice enough or what if i make a mistake or what if mm -hmm. so that all will come out in the analysis which will give a negative response but mm -hmm. anybody from a two-year-old mm -hmm. to a hundred-year-old anybody can draw a circle Mm -hmm. anybody yeah. can do a dot anybody can do a cross so that's why i've chosen those specific elements mm -hmm. you can also do a square or a triangle anything that is simple to do the mm -hmm. the whole point of this is the simplicity okay i also require them to write down four words mm -hmm. four simple words and number them one two three four and then write the numbers down around the circle Mm -hmm. And then I do the analysis. I do an analysis of the handwriting, the positioning. I do mm -hmm. an analysis of how the circle was drawn, what the pressure points are, um, the size of it, the texture of it, all other aspects that come in with my analysis. Mm -hmm. um, I go, I'm very strict when it comes to um, people's information. So I will always ask for permission. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. I'll ask them for permission. Would you mind if I start? And they'll give me permission. Mm -hmm. Then if they'd like me to go, to, I will always stop myself and I tell them, do you give me permission to go further? Only if they give me permission will I go to the next step. And then after that, I tell them, do you give me permission to go even further? Yes. But once they say they feel they're not comfortable, mm -hmm. all they have to do is just say, stop. Okay. Once they say stop, I will immediately stop. And then we will start something else. Mm -hmm. We can do imagery or we can do other theories. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely fine. It sounds My like main objective, more, more comfortable, right? Something yes, absolutely. Yes. Or it could be the subject that we're touching, they're a bit too sensitive about. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't be the proper coach to guide them through that. So then they'd need to be referred to a coach who is more specialized in that specific field for mm -hmm. them. All I care about, beginning to end, are my clients. They're the most important thing to me. Yes. And making sure that they're comfortable, making sure that they feel that they're in a safe zone, making sure that they want to learn more and they want to get to the next level is the most important thing to me. I don't care about anything else. Mm. And I'll always go above and beyond for them. Always. Yes. Nice. Nice. So how do you help those clients to overcome their own difficulties? Maybe you give them some suggestions, maybe just because they have the limiting belief, they don't do it. Sometimes it might happen. Yeah. Yes. Well, the beauty of my system <laughs> is that it will cover everything for you. You can't really hide. That's why I have to always ask permission. Mm -hmm. So let's say that, let's just say, for example, that you had drawn me a circle and I was ana analyzing it. And I saw that, let's just for an example, mm -hmm. let's say that you had an issue between uh, work and life balance. It mm -hmm. came out in the drawing that there was an issue mm -hmm. between work and life balance. Well, then the next step we do is we will discuss what are the things that you feel are getting in the way. Mm -hmm. um, and then I will coach you through it. I've got different handouts. I've got different tools that I can use that I'll bring in as well. And we get to the heart of the matter. We'll try to figure out as deep as we can, mm -hmm. as long as you give me permission to do so. Okay. Find out what it is and then discuss it. And while we're discussing it, your subconscious mind is actually communicating with us. Yes. Continuously. Uh -huh. So once it starts to find out some information, it will start to trigger actions and reactions within it. And mm -hmm. you will start to shift while we are still on the call. By the end of the call, you might feel a bit of resistance or a bit of change. Mm -hmm. You go to sleep, you wake up, you'll feel a bit different. You'll mm -hmm. be more willing to do actions. You'll be more willing to move forward. Mm -hmm. Just to help them right. to, to open, With open you. up. Right? Yes, to help yes. them to open up. Okay. Yeah. Yes. yes. Absolutely. That sounds nice. So how long does that take to, let's say, somebody who has a, a problem between life and the work? It's uh, there's some kind of imbalance. So how long does it take for a person to having that problem uh, to solving that problem? How much time it does it all depend? It depends. It depends on the person. Okay. It depends on, because all that I can do is show them what's there. Mm -hmm. But it's up to them to do the work. Mm -hmm. It's up to them to transform. I can't do it for them. Yes. No therapist can. It's up to them to want to move forward. Even if somebody, well, let's say, went to a... Um, a hypnotherapist, for ex for example, mm -hmm. and the hypnotherapist did all their work, found out everything, got them to where they need to be, and then let's just say gave them exercises, gave them a recording, gave them a worksheet, whatever it was, and said, you need to follow this for 21 days. Mm -hmm. The therapist cannot contact them every single day saying, have you done it? Have you done it? Have you done it? It's up to the client to do that. Mm -hmm. That's right. If the client chooses to use the 21 days and to stick to the program, they will have the results. Mm -hmm. If the client decides to do one week 
and then not do the rest of it, mm -hmm. they will not have the results. Mm -hmm. So commitment is key. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, definitely, definitely. Yes. I think the, the same for my students as well. I can teach them, tell them all the knowledge and how to do it. It's up to them to do it or not because I cannot uh, watch them 24 hours. It's up to them. Yes. Yes, if they want yes. to change it or not, right? Absolutely. And each person is different. Some mm -hmm. person could have a very simple misunderstanding of a specific situation that happened many years ago. Mm -hmm. And I can shift them in one in one hour. Wow. Other people could have really? yeah, other people could have um issues that are really deep rooted. Mm -hmm. Really, really deep rooted. They will take longer. Other people who are in business, for example, they want to be able to transform a lot in order to achieve what they need or their goal. They might choose to have me on a, on a retainer for mm -hmm. one year where we can work together twice a month for about an, an hour every other week. Yes. Um, and we can tackle any subject that comes along. Mm -hmm. It depends on the client and what their issue is. Mm -hmm. So I can, I could potentially customize packages for clients, depending on the client, um, if needed. If they qualify for what I can do, then definitely. Yes. Um, if they're large businesses, we can, they can definitely have me on a, on a retainer. Because if they have me on the retainer, not only will I be seeing them, I can also see other members of their staff. Mm -hmm. So I could be helping other employees as well to achieve. And then the whole organization can benefit. Wow. wow. So, so it really depends. Build their business. Improve their business. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. So it depends on what they really want. Because you can help with personal performance. You can help with identity. You can help with shifts. There's so many things that come in when it comes to handwriting and coaching, especially mm -hmm. when they're mixed together, it opens up all sorts of dimensions wow. for um, development. Well, I that believe. Sounds, that sounds really, really amazing. And, and, and I know yeah. you've been helping some students to uh, get better grades in school, right? Could you tell us yes. a story about, about it? Yes. Well, recently I've seen someone um, just a few months ago there. They said that they usually get their grades are they get like an A, a B and then the rest are all C's. Mm. So um, I've done the handwriting analysis with them and, the, and my coaching. It didn't take us more than half an hour, to be honest. Oh, that's, that's for her, time. Really short time. Yes. For her, it didn't take more than half an hour. She found out what her study mode is and she applied it to all of her studies. Um, she was in year 10, which to us is like it's GCSEs. It's a very important year. It's before you get to, to college and before you go off to university. But it qualifies you for going into college. So it's very important. She came out results for the first term. She got straight A's. Wow. Amazing. On all of the subjects. So from getting an A, B, and then eight Cs, she got straight A's. Mm -hmm. And she was really, really happy, of course. Wow. <laughs> Who wouldn't be? <laughs> yes. Amazing. Uh, I remember when I was in school, I did really bad at math because I didn't like it at all. So how, how do you deal with that if somebody who really didn't like the, the, the subject, can the person yeah. do well in school as well? Of course, definitely, because it all depends on your learning style. So I do this for mm -hmm. students who are 14 years and above, because that's when I know that, they're, that they're, their mind has been configured properly. Mm -hmm. They can take this advice. Before 14 years, they're still developing, so it wouldn't be as effective. When I do the analysis, for example, let's just do math, okay? okay? If I ask a student to draw me two columns and cross them any way they like, uh -huh. depends on their drawing, it will give me an insight into their perception. Once I get an insight into their perception, I know how, they, how their mind works. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. So I'll understand how they can deal with analysis when it comes to numbers, when it comes to equations, this is for math. And then I can immediately tell them, well, this is how you're studying. This is why it's not working. And this is what you need to do to study. Mm -hmm. You need to do one, two, three, four, five. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's not a one, you know, one form fixes all. Each person yes. is different. Each person is different. I would love to be able to advance it to the point where I can have different groups and set a, like a specific style for each section or each group and then, you know, like provide it for people. But until now, I haven't been able, I haven't found that yet. So I am working on it. Yes. But so far, each one is in the, is individual but mm -hmm. yes i can transform them mm -hmm. so it's like and a customized solution for each issue customize one. yeah yes. all i need my students to do if it's math as i said uh -huh. draw me the two columns cross them anywhere you want mm -hmm. if it's more of like english history geography things like that i would ask them to draw me a triangle cross it any any way they like two crosses through and then write down um hearing sight and speech and then i will see which which area is more dependent and i will tell them what form of study they need to do mm -hmm. is it more visual and audible is it just visual is it just audible do they need to read out loud so that they can under they can hear themselves what style works for them best yes and as soon as they draw it for me i can immediately tell it so it doesn't take long at all the um it'll take me minutes to find out what it is but mm -hmm. for me to show them and for them to practice it with me to make sure that that's the real thing it's about half an hour maximum mm -hmm. at one one hour but it's usually just half an, an hour and i can just change their lives wow that's amazing Maybe you have been following me for quite some time now. You've been watching my videos for a period of time. I want to hear from you how my work has impacted your life and your Chinese learning process. I want you to comment below and share with me your story because that's what gives me the drive, the motivation to create more, to inspire more. I do read every single one of your comments. So I look forward to reading your story.